Jason from Blockbuilders, and we want to talk today about the difference between BitMEX and the Binance Futures platform. So if you want to trade future contracts, and there are actually two great options right now. One is the Binance Futures platform and the other one is BitMEX. And we want to compare the difference between the two platforms. First of all, if you don't have a BitMEX account, feel free to use my link down below. And with that link, you will save 10% on trading fees. And I also have a link down below um, for Binance. So if you want to trade on Binance, you also can use my link and save 10% on trading fees. And there's also a referral code for the futures platform. So if you don't have an account with the Binance futures platform yet, you can use the code BlockBuilders and you will save um, also 10% on trading fees. So it's a good way to actually save some money while trading. So first of all, if you want to trade on one of these two platforms, so either if it is um, Binance Futures or BitMEX, you have to register, but that's actually pretty easy with these two platforms because they don't require you to do a KYC and know your customer process, a verification process. So you only have to um, give them your email address and confirm your email address, and then you can actually start trading immediately. Um, the main difference is basically that you can only restore up to two Bitcoins per day on Binance if you're not verified. On BitMEX, there is no real limit for this, for the restore. And you only have a limit of 200 um, Bitcoins that you can trade or positions up to 200 Bitcoins that you can trade. So it's uh, fairly large and you can use both platforms and without verification. So that's quite convenient. So you can just sign up and start trading immediately once you deposit your money. Um, another small difference is that um, on Binance or Binance Futures, and Bitcoin is called BTC, and on BitMEX it's called XBT. So don't call, get confused with that. It's just a different short code for Bitcoin, it's XBT. And if you want to start trading, you actually need to deposit uh, money on both platforms. So on BitMEX, you actually have to deposit um, Bitcoins. So in order to start trading, um, you just have to send your Bitcoins to BitMEX and you can start trading immediately. Um, if you want to start trading on Binance Futures, you have to use um, Tether. Um, so what they use is USDT, Tether. And that's basically a stable coin that is packed to the US dollar. So for every Tether or USDT they issue, they have like one USD in the bank. And at least that's what they're claiming. And so in the back, here on Binance Futures, you're always holding Tether. On BitMEX, you are holding um, Bitcoin. And that's actually a fairly large difference. Um, because before we explain the difference, and first, if you want to transfer Tether to Binance Futures, you can just click here on Transfer, and then, then you can transfer from your Binance wallet to your Futures wallet. And it goes immediately because it's not a, a transaction that is recorded on the blockchain. It just, um, it's only recorded in the Binance backend. So it's fairly quick and should be there immediately. And you don't pay any fee for it. And so the difference is on BitMEX, you are holding Bitcoin in the back. So if you are not in the position, let's say you are sending one Bitcoin to BitMEX and BitMEX or Bitcoin's value, current value is 10,000 USD and you are stuck with that. So assume that you, that the Bitcoin value will go down by 10%, then you still have one Bitcoin, but your dollar value is down to 9,000 um, dollar. So um, you can actually trade smaller positions by then because um, the Bitcoin value went down. Um, for Binance Futures, you are holding Tether, so it doesn't really matter what the Bitcoin value is. Um, of course, it becomes more expensive to buy a Bitcoin if the Bitcoin price goes up, but you are not in risk of losing value um, in terms of US dollar if you hold Tether. <clears throat> so to put that in perspective, 
if you are bullish on Bitcoin and you think um, the Bitcoin price will go to like 10,000, 20,000, 40,000, 100,000 US dollar, it's probably better for you to trade on BitMEX. And because you are still participating in that um, bull run or in the case that the value will go up um, if you are holding Bitcoin in the back. So if you are still holding Bitcoins, even if you are not in the position, you will still profit from the price that goes up. And if you think Bitcoin will go to zero, it's probably better for you to trade on the Binance Futures platform. So because you don't lose any value, if the Bitcoin price drops, even if you are not in the position, in a position. So the other different we want to talk about are the contracts and the leverage. So first of all, on Binance Futures, you can actually trade two contracts. You can either trade um, Bitcoin or Ethereum, and that are both perpetual contracts. So they have an indefinite, they don't have an expiration date. So you can actually be in the position theoretically forever. Um, on BitMEX, you also have the per perpetual contract, and then you have like futures contract with a fixed expiration date. And you can trade the Bitcoin contract on Binance with a leverage of one up to one to 125 and on BitMEX on with a leverage of one to 100. Um, I mean, it's nice to have a leverage of one to 125, but you really shouldn't use a leverage of like 100 or 125 because if the price drops by less than 1%, you actually get liquidated. So it's actually not very smart to use such a high leverage, um, especially if you're not like 100% sure what you are doing. So I cannot recommend um, using that. And if you're new to trading, stay away from the high leverage. Um, so be very careful here. So the leverage doesn't really isn't really the difference why you should trade either on BitMEX or on Binance. But there are actually more contracts on BitMEX. Uh, move that to the side. And as I said here, you only have like two contracts. On BitMEX, you have way more. You can actually trade um, the perpetual contract where, where you have no expiration date. But then you can trade futures contract with an expiration date. For example, um, end of the year. So it's always end of the quarter. It's either one quarter, two quarters, or three quarters. And the difference why you should use futures contract sometimes is uh, funding. Because with a perpetual contract, it's the same for BitMEX and for Binance, you actually pay funding every eight hours. So currently the funding is 0.01%. So if you are in a long position, you would pay that amount every eight hours. And it's basically the same for Binance Futures. Um, funding here is currently negative, so if you are long, in a long position, you would actually get money. Um, it's but only a small percent. But you have to know that funding changes like every eight hours, so it could become positive again um, in eight hours. So you have to be a bit careful. But however, if you stay long and the funding is mostly positive, you actually pay funding every eight hours, and then it can up add up um, if you look at it over several days or several weeks quite fast. If you want to stay in a position longer than a few days, it sometimes makes sense to take a futures contract because you only pay a fee when you open the contract and that's it. You don't pay funding every eight hours. So you really have to look at how long you want to stay in that position and if the funding will be during that time mostly positive or negative and then and decide what you want to do. <clears throat> um, however, on Binance Futures, you don't have the option. You can only trade perpetual contracts where you pay funding every eight hours or you receive money. However, changes every eight hours and you can't really tell how it will be in eight hours. So it's always a bit of a risk. <coughs> um, besides uh, contracts, so there are more contracts on BitMEX. And there are also more coins, so you can, besides Bitcoin and Ethereum, you can also trade Cardano, Bitcoin Cash, EOS, Litecoin, Tron, and Ripple, except XRP. So you have way more options on BitMEX. 
And if we look at the fees, um, the fees are yeah, also mostly similar. You have a maker and a taker fee, but here on BitMEX, the maker fee is actually negative. You get the maker fee when you pay or when you do a limit order that is not executed immediately. So if I um, enter a limit order that goes into the order book and will be executed later, I pay the maker fee and the maker fee here is negative. That means you actually receive money. So you start your position with um, a little profit. And only the taker fee is, is positive at 0.075%. So if you do a market order that gets executed immediately or filled immediately, you pay the taker fee and that's 0.05%. <clears throat> if we look at it at BitMEX, um, here you actually pay a maker fee um, at 0.02% and the taker fee is 0.04%. So the maker fee is higher, therefore the taker fee, but um, on contrast, the taker fee is actually cheaper. So um, usually you should always try to enter a position with a limit order because it's cheaper or you get money. And it's actually better trading because your position is usually better when you really think about your position and you have a good entry. And um, so that's cheaper on BitMEX, but um, the taker fee is more expensive on BitMEX that you have to know. And here, as you can see, for the traditional futures, um, you only pay maker and taker fee and for Bitcoin a settlement fee, but not for the other coins. And that's it. And here with a perpetual contract, you pay funding, depending if it is negative or positive, you pay or you receive money. So that's a different in terms of fees and what you're actually paying to be in a position. And then there's a small difference when you look at the order types. Um, on both platforms, you can use limit and market orders, but on BitMEX, you can also use um, a trailing stop and a take profit order. Um, if we look at Binance, you can only use limit and market orders and a stop limit and stop market orders. You don't have a trailing stop, so with a trading stop, you can, for example, say, okay, um, if the price drops by 100 US dollar, I want to stop my position or I want to exit my position, sell the position. And if the price goes up, like let's say the price goes up 200 US dollars and then the stop goes with it. And if the price then drops by 100 US dollars and the stop gets triggered. So because you had a drop of 100 US dollars and that's basically a trading stop. And the take profit is you can say, okay, if the price goes to that level, I want to sell part of my position and take profit as the name already suggests. So you actually have a few more options on BitMEX. However, most of the people will just use limit or market orders and maybe a stop order and that you can use on both platforms. <clears throat> Last thing we want to look about look at is the difference in security and here it's also hard to tell which platform is better because um, both platforms keep usually 98% um, of the funds from the customers in cold storage so they're not accessible online and, and there was no hacking accident incident so far on BitMEX, so no customer ever lost money due to hacking on BitMEX. And Binance had an incident a couple months back. Um, there was an incident with a hot wallet and Bitcoins worth 40 million US dollars were stolen. However, and Binance covered that loss and customers didn't lose any money. So it's fair to say both platforms are fairly safe. They have an insurance fund which covers huge losses and um, you can't really see a difference here. Both platforms from the outside seem to be equally secure in terms of security. So um, that should make the difference between Binance Futures and BitMEX. So to sum it all up, um, there's no clear winner here because um, both platforms are good. And you can trade on both platforms. The uh, volume is not that different. Here, for example, you have a volume of 90,000 BTC in 24 hours. And here it's um, 130,000 BTC and it's 
actually enough if you are trading like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand US dollar positions and it's fairly enough on both platforms. So you can't really say um, one platform is better than the other in terms of liquidity. I mean, BitMEX is a bit better, but it's not that big of a difference. Um, so there's no big difference. So the main difference, in my opinion, is that you have a few more options on Binance, uh, on BitMEX, sorry. You have more contracts and you have more coins and you have a few more orders. So that's all um, an argument to trade on BitMEX. And um, of course, um, you have to consider as well that you are holding Bitcoins in the back. So if you are bearish on Bitcoin in the long term, um, it's probably not right to be on BitMEX because um, if Bitcoin goes to zero or close to zero or something happens, you lose basically your money. And then it would be better to be um, with Binance Futures and trade on that platform because you are holding USDT tether and which is pegged to the US dollar. So if you are bearish, it's probably better to be on Binance Futures. If you are bullish or neutral, um, I would probably go with BitMEX because, um, as I said, um, more other types and more coins, more contracts, and usually the platform where currently more people are trading. So it's actually fairly safe to say and BitMEX would be the better option here. However, um, you don't do anything wrong if you're using Binance Futures. So that's it basically. If you have any questions, feel free to use um, the comments down below. If you don't have an account yet and use the links down below um, to save on trading fees. And I would also like for you to and like the video or and subscribe to my channel and that's it basically for today. Thanks for watching.